All right, so now that we've got the light presets and assets, uh, package assets installed, let's come in here to the uh, package asset browser. And we're going to do a quick start in Random Man. So make sure we come down to Random Man, make sure it is set to, to Random Man in the interface. And if it's not loaded up here, double click on an asset and that will try to load Random Man, the Random Man plugin up. So once Random Man loads, you'll see it up here in the top thing. And we've got our shelf appearing. So we can see that Random Man is definitely ready to go now. Now we just have to double click again and bring that asset in. Now Random Man has a bit of a problem on my machine with shaders, they are pretty horrible. So you can come into lighting and shading and just use the default material that will make everything sort of a Lambert gray in the viewport. Now that that's there, we can scroll down and double click on that. That will bring her in as well. And we've got something to render. So a couple of things I do is just put anti-aliasing on the viewport there. And if we come back into uh, the C3DC shelf on the camera icon, can right click and make that 0.9 to 5,000 is a good default for the viewport. And we can also make this a uh, square 1080 by 1080p there. So that just means that our rendering is a little bit better. One thing I like to do too, is just on the camera, if you select it with K for camera or view select camera, you can come up here and make that 80. So that just gives it a little bit more of a zoom in lens on the camera. It's just a bit better for portraits. So now that we're, we've got something to render, let's come across into the IBL Skydome manager here. So IBLs or HDR images or Skydomes, they're all sort of the same thing. You can put that over here and you can see the icons here. Now to create one of these HDR images, we just double click. That will create it and put it in the background so we can sort of see it there. It's like a big sphere dome around our object. This will help us to light. Now the new version of Render Man, I am in version render 22, we can render directly from the viewport. So we can try this out quickly and we'll come into the renderer here and we're going to switch to Render Man. This is in the viewport. So it'll take a little while to kick in for Render Man to kick in there and render. And there we go. Now this is cool now. This is sort of like the future. We can uh, come in and zoom around in the viewport and select things and even move things here in the viewport and Render Man will update that into a live render. So this is a render window. A couple of things about Render Man. The first time when you click on these guys, we'll give you this kind of white background while it loads and it has to convert that to .tex files. And once that does, it will be pretty fast. So if we go back and forth between these two by double clicking them, they will be creating quickly now. And it depends if I've, I've loaded some of these before. So I believe some of these will be quick. Others like this one will be a bit slow because it hasn't been converted yet. Once they're converted, they'll be fine. They're actually saving .tex files to the disk. So just a couple of the controls here. These guys are making the lights brighter. If you hold shift, it will go faster. I hold control and it will go slower. That's uh, same with here. So alt will reset that. That's all shown by the way on the tooltips. You see that there, if you forget that. Here we can rotate that IBL, so that's just rotating it around. If you hold down shift, that will move faster. And if you hold control, that will go slower. So you can see that's just going slowly now, rotating around. Alt resets that back to zero. And we've also got our background visibility here. So this won't work in the view here unless we go into the show menu and hide the lights. So lights in Renderman are actually plugin shapes. If we take those off, now you can see that's gone away. And if we bring that back on again, now we are seeing the actual render and not the lights. It's just a viewport thing. So there you go, guys. That's how this works. Remembering that these settings, uh, if we were to bring that up to five, now when we bring in all the lights, they'll always be five. So it's sort of like always reads these settings down the bottom. If we've got the background lights off, double click there, it will be changing these settings, but keeping to these here. So it's pretty nice and intuitive. All right, so let's let's shut down this render view. This is cool and kind of gimmicky at the moment, but it's a little bit flaky. And we'll come back to the viewport to do the next little thing here. We can bring back in our show menu to our plugin shape so we can see those lights there. Now, a couple of things here, we'll go through them. Now, one of those is that these guys here, these assets, if we come in and open them up, they are tagged by type. So all these guys here are background. So what that means is we've got this little checkbox down here by type. And if we double click it here, it will delete anything else by type background from the scene and replace it with this one. So if I double click that, we have actually deleted this guy and imported that in. So you can sort of just quickly go through and your backgrounds now and uh, switch them out. Now the same goes for assets down here. You can see that we've got Natalie in there and she's a hero model. So it's going to search by type and it's going to replace by type at this stage because we've got that checked on. We double click the turtle and the turtle comes in now separately. So same with all these assets, no matter what you've got here, it will be replacing those there. A couple of 
royalty free assets here this is the batman by mauricio garcia and you can check out his website there he's got some nice sub brush shoots uh you've got uh down here this is our watch and this is by r chavez as well so these are royalty free models that have distribution rights there so let's just go back to that anyway here and we want to render actually in the render man window now so we come into ipr render and do it that way another way that we can do it is we can come over here now i want to actually right click and set the resolution here to be 50%, so 540 by 540 rather than 1080 by 1080. And now we can go render man IPR render. This will open up it, the it renderer. Now a couple of little hotkeys here. If you want the catalog, that's C. And if you want the information, that's I. Control F will show that. So I should have my hotkeys on, but I think that's pretty easy. C for catalog, I for that, and then Control F frames that. So that's a nice way of interacting with this. Also make sure that you've got Windows on top, that is T. That means that now when we click in the browser, we won't lose that. This is another program, okay? This is not in part of Maya. So now that we've got that sitting there, we can bring up our light presets. So come back to the C3D C shelf and we'll bring up the light presets, move this across. And the way that the light presets work is they're just a collection of lights. So at the moment we've got this disc around our lights, but if we are to sort of just start double clicking these guys, you can see that now it's just two area lights in the scene and it's rendering there. This viewer, by the way, is a lot more stable. So you can see the different light setups that are happening in the scene to see what they're doing. So this is a great way of learning lighting if you're new to lighting to see the sort of setups that I've made here. If we come down here, it is also like a combination sometimes of IBLs and light setups sometimes that will help depending on the preset depending on the preset that one's also got a nice uh, background on it there so let's just come back in and arrange our camera so that everything's good i usually like to be y up and x that way for these presets to work nicely there you go you see that rendering and now we can just double click on these guys and you'll see it update in the render man window scroll down a little bit here and we've got all the nat light presets here what these guys are is they're very very similar to these guys at the top here. Some of them are just duplicated and they're sort of like the picks for this model. So every model has different properties and different light setups look good for different models. These are the my picks for Natalie. So you can just come in and see what they look like. And if you're loading up the dragon or something like that, or Batman or the watch, you can see some of the picks. And I tweak the lights a little bit for these models, but not that much there. So that's how the light presets work. That's a pretty good indication. Remembering that you can change the models at any stage. We can come down to the watch, say, and that'll just bring that in. Takes a little while for a random man to kick in the shaders. So I see it there. And then we'll come down and you can use some of these watch presets too. And we've also got darker background. So you can say, hey, I want a darker background on that. And that should have made it darker. If it doesn't, um, you can just hit R again or escape. And then R should update that. Uh, R is rendering it properly. So we just need to come back to a random man shelf and hit the IPR again. That'll refresh that with the thing. So usually your render man is pretty good these days, but if it does sort of stop, you've just got to hit escape and then hit the IPR button again to get that started again. So I hope that's a good introduction into the light presets and asset browser. Of course, there's a lot more buttons here, so I'll go through these in detail uh, lower on the page.